camera is on. Meeting the following day with Trump Jr. Later that day, Trump Jr. forwarded the entirety of his email correspondence regarding the meeting with Goldstone to Manafort and Krishna under the subject line forward Russia dash Clinton dash private and confidential, adding a note that the meeting got moved to four tomorrow at my offices. Krishna then sent his assistant a second email informing her that the meeting with Don Jr. is 4 p.m. now. Manafort responded, see you then, P. Rick Gates, who was the deputy campaign chairman, stated during interviews with the office that in the days before June 9, 2016, Trump Jr. announced at a regular morning meeting of senior campaign staff and Trump family members that he had a lead on negative information about the Clinton Foundation. Footnote 703. Although the March 1st 302 refers to June 19, that is likely a typographical error. External emails indicate that a meeting with those participants occurred on June 6. Gates believed that Trump Jr. said the information was coming from a group in Kyrgyzstan and that he was introduced to the group by a friend. Footnote 704, Aras Agalarov is originally from Azerbaijan and public reporting indicates that his company, the Crocus Group, has done substantial work in Kyrgyzstan. Gates recalled that the meeting was attended by Trump Jr., Eric Trump, Paul Manafort, Hope Hicks and Johnny Hague, Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner. According to Gates, Manafort warned the group that the meeting likely would not yield vital information and that they should be careful. Hicks denied any knowledge of the June 9th meeting before 2017. And Krishna did not recall if the planned June 9th meeting came up at all earlier that week. Michael Cohen recalled being in Donald J. Trump's office on June 6th or 7th when Trump Jr. told his father that a meeting to obtain adverse information about Clinton was going forward. Cohen did not recall Trump Jr. stating that the meeting was connected to Russia. From the tenor of the conversation, Cohen believed that Trump Jr. had previously discussed the meeting with his father, although Cohen was not involved in any such conversation. In an interview with the Senate Judiciary Committee, however, Trump Jr. stated that he did not inform his father about the emails or the upcoming meeting. Footnote 711. The Senate Judiciary Committee interview was not under oath, but Trump Jr. was advised that it is a violation of 18 U.S.C. 1001 to make materially false statements in a congressional investigation. Congressional investigation. Similarly, neither Manafort nor Krishna recalled anyone informing candidate Trump of the meeting, including Trump Jr. President Trump has stated to this office in written answers to questions that he has no recollection of learning at the time that his son Manafort or Krishna was considering participating in a meeting in June 2016 concerning potentially negative information about Hillary Clinton. Footnote 713. Written responses of Donald J. Trump, November 20th, 2018, at 8, response to question 1, parts A to C. We considered whether one sequence of events suggested that candidate Trump had contemporaneous knowledge of the June 9th meeting. On June 7th, 2016, Trump announced his intention to give a major speech, probably Monday of next week, which would have been June 13th, about all of the things that have taken place with the Clinton. See, example, Philip, Bump, what we know about the Trump Tower meeting, Washington Post, August 7th, 2018. Following the June 9th meeting, Trump changed the subject of his planned speech to national security, but the office did not find evidence that the original idea for the speech was connected to the anticipated June 9th meeting or that the change of topic was attributed to the failure of that meeting to produce concrete evidence about Clinton. Other events, such as the Pulse nightclub shooting on June 12th, could well have changed, caused the change. The President's written answer to our question stated that the speech's focus was altered in light of the Pulse nightclub shooting. See written responses, supra. As for the original topic of the June 13th speech, Trump has said that he expected to give a speech referencing the publicly available negative information about the Clintons and that the draft of the speech prepared by campaign staff was based on publicly available material, including in particular information from the book Clinton Cash by Peter Schweitzer. 
written report responses Supra. In a letter, June 22nd, in a later June 22nd speech, Trump did speak extensively about allegations that Clinton was corrupt, drawing from the Clinton cash book. See for transcript Donald Trump NYC speech on state of the election, political from June 22nd, 2016. B. The events of June 9th, 2016. 1. Arrangements for the meeting. Veselnitskaya was in New York on June 9, 2016 for appellate proceedings in the Prevson civil forfeiture litigation. Footnote 714. Testimony of Natalia Veselnitskaya before the Senate Committee on Judiciary, November 20th, 2017, at 41.42. Alison Frankel, how did Russian lawyer Veselnitskaya get into the US for Trump Tower meeting? Hmm. That day, Veselnitskaya called Rinat Akhmetin, a Soviet-born U.S. lobbyist, Grand Jury! <laughs> and when she learned that he was in New York, invited him to lunch. Footnote 715, Grand Jury! told the office that he had worked on issues relating to the Magnitsky Act and had worked on the Prevetson litigation. Footnote 717, Ahmed Zin, 1114, at 46, semicolon, Grand Jury! <laughs> Kavlate and Anatoly Samochornov a Russian-born translator who had assisted Veselnitskaya with Magnitsky-related lobbying and the Preveson case also attended the brunch. Footnote 717, Kavalatza 1116, 1703, 02, at 7 semicolon, Grand Jury! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Footnote 
note 723, example, summation note 712, 17, 302, pat 4, Goldstone 2, 8, 18, 302, pat 9. Grand jury. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did not say anything about the subject of the meeting, footnote 725, grand jury. <laughs> Participants agreed that the Selniskaya stated that the Ziv brothers had broken Russian laws and had donated their profits to the DNC or the Clinton campaign, footnote 726, grand jury. <laughs> She asserted that the Ziff brothers had engaged in tax evasion and money laundering. <laughs> 